Making a custom login page helps you show a recognizable brand to your clients, and as a result, a custom client login page gives your site a more professional appearance. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create a client login page for your WordPress site quickly and easily with no coding at all. Everyone here at Seedprod loves having you part of the community, so please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. Let's jump right in on how to create a client login page in WordPress. Okay, great. So the first thing that we want to do is come over to your WordPress dashboard, and we need to install Seedprod. Let's also head over to seedprod.com or click the link in the description below. Once here, you can click on one of the buttons to get Seedprod. I'm going to be using Seedprod Pro in this video, so please select the plan that makes the most sense for you. And then let's go ahead and log in after you create an account. On the left hand side, enter your email address, your password, and click login. Inside your Seedprod account, you want to click on downloads. It's the second tab here. And let's click on the big orange button here to download the plugin. You also see the license key here in the bottom left hand corner. Let's go ahead and click the icon here to copy that. And we can close this window. Back in WordPress, let's come over to the left hand side under plugins and add new. And up at the top, let's go to upload plugin. Here we have the choose file. So you can click this and select the zip file that we just downloaded. Or if you're using the same browser as I am or similar, you can click on this and drag it and drop it on the choose file button. Next, let's go ahead and click on install now. Next, let's go ahead and activate the plugin. So is going to ask you for a license key. Let's go ahead and paste that right here and click on verify key. If everything went successful, you should see a green success message here in the top right corner. Again, if you're using the same browser, similar as I am, you can close this tab at the bottom. All right, great. Now we can go ahead and create the login page. On the left-hand side, you'll now see Seedprod. Let's go ahead and click on pages. And now Seedprod comes with various modes that you can use to create a coming soon page, a maintenance mode page, a login page, a 404 page, or you can create your own custom pages here at the bottom. For this video, we're going to look at creating a login page. So let's go ahead and click on set up a login page. And next, Seedprod's going to ask you to choose a new page template. And we have these filters here. Now, right now we're filtered by only the login page templates. Now, of course, you can create one from scratch with the blank template. Or you can actually select one of our 100 plus page templates that come with Seedprod. Of course, since this video is for login pages, let's go ahead and click here. And let's select one that makes the most sense for our situation. Here is one called Peekaboo Login Page. I'm going to click on the check mark here to add this. Seedprod's going to ask you for a page name. I'm just going to keep this simple and call mine login, and it'll show you the page URL as well. Let's go ahead and save and start editing the page. Here we can see the visual page builder inside of Seedprod. On the right hand side, you'll see all of these outlines. These are your rows and columns and blocks. So you can create these from scratch, or again, you can edit a template, which is what we're doing right now. On the left hand side, you'll see your blocks, which include headlines and text and videos and dividers. We have advanced blocks where we can put in countdowns, animated headlines, Google Maps, and much more. If you have WooCommerce installed, you can also add some WooCommerce features as well. And it's very easy to add things into your page. So for example, if you want a headline, you can click here and drag it in. And every block works the same way where you'll click the cog wheel here, for the block settings. And on the left hand side, the settings will change here based on what type of block it is. So for this example, we have the text that we can update and change, the alignment, the font size, and the semantic level of this block. They all have advanced settings as well. And under here, you can edit the styles, spacing, and device visibility. And again, depending on the block, there may be more options as well. If we don't want this block, we can click the trash can here to delete that block. And yes, we want to delete it. Let's go ahead and just update the page here quick. So let's change this heading and I'll just call this maybe client login. Next here we have a login form. If we click the settings here, we can see the label used for user field. So this says email address. Maybe we'll just shorten this to email. Or if you want, you could get rid of this altogether and we could just use the placeholder inside. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll use the placeholder. So here we have email and password. Next we have the button. So we can change the text here. I'll change this to login. We also have a success action. So what do you want to have happen after they log in? So you can actually send them to a different URL if you like. And you can also show logged in text. Now, if they visit this page, this is the message that they will see if they're already logged in. So it'll say you're already logged in as this specific user. And this will be replaced by whatever the user's display name is. At the bottom, we have additional options. So we have the remember user label. So this, this is button right here, which will enable a cookie so that it'll remember them for a certain amount of days. And the lost password link text, which is right here. So you can fully customize all of the options and text here. Next, we have templates. So if you want to change the input fields. So for example, we can select this one. It has a subtle little border there. Here's another one. There's a wide border. We have the gray input fields. We have the dark input. We have the bottom border field. And don't worry, you can change the text color here as well under the advanced tab. We have the bottom border field. And we have the transparent. I like the wide border for this example. So let's go ahead with that. 
And let's go under the advanced tab here. So here you can see all of the colors that you can change. So everything for the link colors, the field, the form, the fields down here, the button, you have tons of options. I'm going to leave all of this alone for now, but you can but just be aware that those are there to customize. Under form, we have the label font, so you can change this. I'm going to leave that alone for now. You have the text size, the row spacing, so you can maybe bring this a little closer or further apart if you like. You have the alignment, you can put that on a different side if you like. I'll put this on the right side. Under fields, we have the fonts, the field size, so you can make these very large if you like, or small, whatever your preference is. The label spacing, we don't have labels right now, so we're just going to leave that alone. Here we have the field border width. So if we change this, you can see that that border gets really big here. I'll leave that at two. We have the border radius. So that's the rounded edges on the fields themselves. You can see that turns into like a pillbox effect if I put it up all the way, or you can have it squared. So I'll have the sharp corners here. I'll leave it like that. Let's go under the button. Here you can change the button font, the button size. So you can make a large button, medium button. I'll leave that at medium. As well, you have the border radius here you can change. Down here under spacing, we have top margin, so we can change the placement of this, as well as padding. So if you want a lot of padding, you can add that, or zero padding, you can add zero. At the bottom, we have device visibility. So here you can select any block on the page, and then you can either hide it on desktop or hide it on mobile. So if you don't want this to show, for example, on desktop, we can gray this out, and now this will only show on mobile devices or vice versa. If you don't want this to show on mobile, you can hide that on mobile. Since we're using a desktop, it's not grayed out. But if we switch down here to the mobile preview, you'll see that that is grayed out. I'm going to turn both of these off for now and switch back to desktop preview. And that's how you would create desktop and mobile friendly designs. Okay, great. Let's go back to our blocks. Let's just add something here. Let's go to social profiles. I'll add these down here at the bottom. Then you can customize these and you can add new shares. For example, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Maybe we don't have, for example, an Instagram page. We could add a new one. Select the type and let's go ahead and add Snapchat. Down here at the style, you can change this default or stacked. You can change the size, make them large. You can change the alignment. Under templates, we have different variations of these. So there they're all gray and white. You can have the colors, whatever you wish. Under advanced, you have all the different styles and options here as well. I'm going to leave these alone how they are now. Next, let's go ahead and change this image on the right hand side. We'll click the block settings and this is an image block and I'm going to delete this one. You can actually upload your own image or you can use a stock image and this is built right into Seedprod. I'll do a quick search here and I'll just select, for example, maybe this light bulb right here. There you go, it fits into your page nicely. You can add alt text, change the image size if you like, the alignment and you can add a link. We also have templates, so you can change the border and different style or drop shadow on that image. I'm going to leave this alone. And same thing for advanced, you have different styling options here. Now in Seedprod, you can change the colors on the block level, but we also have the global settings. So down here on the bottom left, we have global settings for fonts, colors, the background, and you can add your own custom CSS here. So for example, under fonts, we have the header font and the body font. So right now we're using Inter, but if I change this to something random, you'll see that all of the headers on the page update to this font. Now this would be overridden if I'm using the block level. So for example, if I go under here and advance and change the topography to something else, this would be the one that would be used over the global settings. So just be aware of that. If you're changing your global settings and they're not updating, it might be on the block level. Okay, let's come back and let's change enter to something random. You can see all of the text on the page changed to this really ugly font here. If you need help picking fonts, come under font themes here. And these are some pre-made settings here that you can come down, find one that you like. And we'll just click on this one, for example, and it updates on the page. Next, we have the same thing for colors. So we have the header, text, buttons, links, and background. If you need help, again, picking colors, we can click on the color palettes. There's some preset ones here that we can use. Let's go ahead and click on a random one here, maybe this purple one. And that actually looks pretty good with the light bulb. And there you go, you can continue to add new blocks if you like. You can create new layouts here and design. You can add your own graphics, background images, whatever you wish. If you need help putting in certain sections, up here at the top under sections, we have these pre-made sections that you can add. So for example, if you wanna add a certain header, we have these headers that you can import. There's hero sections, call to actions, FAQ, features, and more. So let's say you want to add, for example, this newsletter at the bottom. We'll import this, and you can see that it adds this whole section at the bottom. You just click on the section and then make your changes here on the left-hand side. You'd maybe get rid of all the spacing, or you could simply drag and drop this and put it into a different section if you like. If you don't want this and you made a mistake, you can either delete the whole section or you can click the undo button here. So CPRO comes with an undo and redo button. 
We also have the opt-in form, so you can collect emails from people. For this example on the login page, I wouldn't put this here specifically, but just know that this is here. And if you're going to be collecting emails, we have the connect section here at the top. So let's go ahead and click on here. I just want you to be aware of this, that you can connect your opt-in forms to your favorite third-party email marketing service. So for example, if you use Constant Contact, make sure you create a Constant Contact account and you can click on connect and then connect a new account and then put in your API key. They'll provide you with that API key. And if you need help with that, please contact their support. Just paste that in here and click connect. And then all of your opt-in form emails collected through Seedprod will now go to constant contact. The third tab here is page settings. Now we have general SEO and scripts. So right now we're on the general page. Here's your page title, the login, the status. We have the seed prod link. So this will show a little button on the bottom right corner that says powered by seed prod. If you like, you can join our affiliate program and get a 20% commission. We also have an isolation mode, and this is to help prevent conflicts with your theme or other plugins. If you're using any Facebook features here, you can paste in your Facebook app ID. There's also the redirect the default login page. So you can enable this if you like. So everything from this page would be redirected to your new login page. And if you didn't like what you created, you can go ahead and click on choose template. This will delete all of your current work on your login page and you'll start from scratch. Under SEO, we can add the SEO title, the description, a fave icon, social media thumbnail, and if you want this to be no index. Now this will stop search engines from indexing your page. We also have scripts. You can add header scripts, body scripts, and footer scripts. All right, when you're happy with your page, just go ahead and save it first. And then we can click the little button here and publish this. And there's one more thing we need to do to activate this. So let's go ahead and click the X here. And if you remember back on this page where we selected our page to edit, you might have noticed this little toggle at the bottom. So this is an important step. Right now, the login page is inactive. But if we click this toggle on, you'll see that it is active. And there we go. We can see the login page that we just created. This is fully customized. Right now, you'll see the message that it says I'm logged in as Seedbroad. So if I go ahead and click the log out button, now we can see the full login form here. And there you go. That's how you create a client login page in WordPress with zero coding. Now that you know about how to create a client login page in WordPress, maybe you'd like to check out this video on building a Netflix landing page clone with WordPress, which will help you learn more about the powerful seed prod features. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.